Dr. John McDougall has been looking into the over-counter remedies for kicking the habit. He joins us now, and I've got to know, is this snake oil or does it do anything? Is it effective? Well, it works for some people. It certainly does help. Now, Lena, I have to tell you, I'm a doctor, okay, and I deal with patients all the time who have addictions to various things, and most commonly, of course, tobacco. But I've really got experience in this field because I smoked two packs a day for 10 years. You look so healthy. Well, I am healthy. You're a health health expert. Yes, but that was 16 years ago. And so I've had time to recover. In fact, the recovery is actually very quick. But I know what it's like to be addicted to tobacco. I know what it's like to have my entire life centered around cigarettes. I mean, everything I did. You know, when I went to eat, meetings with friends, getting up in the morning, going to bed at night, everything was oriented around that, having that cigarette. And every cigarette smoker knows exactly what I'm talking about. And that's one of the things that really disturbed me about, about the tobacco use that I had, is that I was so dependent on it, so di- addicted to it. There were other things that bothered me, too. When I got around to quitting, I actually had to formulate. I had to make a list of the reasons that I wanted to quit to get myself ready to do it. Now, you know, you hear about dying or getting emphysema or lung cancer and things like that. That didn't bother a 26-year-old man at all. The reasons that I quit were things that were bothering me at that day. You know, the idea, I had to go into somebody's house and I had to ask for an ashtray. How embarrassing. The way I smelled, I knew I smelled terrible as somebody who smoked. I had to spend money, hard-earned money, on cigarettes. You know, estimates are you spend $1,000 a year supporting this habit. What I could do with $1,000 and the holes that I used to burn in my nice clothes. Now, I made this list, all right, and I got myself ready to quit smoking. And you have to pick this day when you're going to quit. Today, I'm an addict. My whole life is around cigarettes. Tomorrow, I'm going to be free of that. And it's a real important image to form. And you make this list of the reasons you want to quit, and you repeat it at any quiet moment. It may take you a week or two to go through this list. You get up to that day, and you do it. You suffer for a couple of days, but you've done it. And then at about 10 days out, you run into another problem. You say, look, I beat it. I can just have one cigarette. And you'll only make that mistake once. It's been 16 years, Lena. And... I'm still an addict, and I'll never touch that cigarette again. How much did this kind of thing help? Well, I tried different things. I didn't try these exact products, but I tried a few tranquilizers and some substitutes for nicotine, like I tried cigars, switching to, yeah, well, it was not sociable, but, you know, I tried cigars and helped. Uh, But there are other products that you can try that may help a little bit. We have one product here that if you take it and then you smoke, then the cigarettes taste terrible. And we, that works how? Well, what happens is they, they have a chemical in the product that uh, reacts poorly with the nicotine, and the nicotine doesn't taste good once you, uh, once you have uh, this substance in your system. It's called Sure Quit. You'd think that immediately you wouldn't want to smoke anymore if it doesn't taste good. Yeah, you would think so. It's only going to help. It's that decision and that commitment that's going to make the difference. These products are not going to do it for you. We have other products that uh, in some way or another, what they do is they relieve the craving, or at least this is what they're supposed to, and they may do so. Here's the greatest craving reliever. It's the actual nicotine in a gum. You buy this, uh, you get it from your doctor. It's prescription. It's called Nick Red Gum, and you can become addicted to it. It's nicotine. Something new. We have, uh, in fact, it's not new. We, we've used this for years with heroin addicts. This is called catapress or clonidine, and when you take it, it changes the nervous system so that you don't get those addictive cravings, or at least they're less, and it works. It just works with tobacco also. You, the it same decreases. way. And these are patches. They're, you can take it as pills, but these are patches, and you put them on your skin, and they stay for a week, and it decreases the cravings. So, Your number one recommendation among these products? My number one recommendation is not those products. My number one recommendation is you have to make the commitment. And if you want to use these as an aid or you want to go to an education program, there are programs that will help you through it. There are even live-in programs like at St. Helena Hospital that will help you through it. That's fine, but you really have to make that commitment. So these can only help? They're only a help, and they'll just take and get you maybe over one or two hurdles onto a better life, onto breathing again, onto running up hills and feeling really good.